Oh, a dragon. A tea dragon. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, A-Rob. I had this idea tonight when I was working. Um, I wanted to do something consistent, and I've been trying to figure out, like, a theme to my channel and, like, um, I don't know, something that's, like, that happens pretty often other than the vlog. And I think what I'm going to do is something called Thursday Thursdays where I get some brews or a brew. Uh, and then I just kind of talk, you know, 10, 15 minutes just about whatever I'm thinking about, you know, what podcast I'm listening to, um, you know, what's going on in the world. I don't know. I don't want to get too political, but, you know, election season's about to come up. So uh, I'm trying to figure that out. But uh, I'm right now I'm at a place called 101 Bottles. It's a, it's a pretty sweet place. Got a lot of beer, got a lot of wine, got a lot of delightful things. So um, I think I want to make it a weekly thing. I might have a friend or two pop in, talk about stuff. Uh, but it might just be me sometimes. So uh, I don't know. I'm going to try it out, see how it works, and uh, see if you guys like it. So I brought this Dragon's Milk beer uh, for my first video uh, and I usually drink my beer out of a frosty mug but uh, I was looking at the website and they said you have to actually drink it from a stemless snifter which I didn't know it was a thing. But, yep, stemless snifter. So that's what I'm going to do. That is really good. All right, episode one of Thursday, Thursdays, with your boy, A-Rob. Today we are trying something called Dragon's Milk. I think each week that I do this, I'll, I'll feature a beer and kind of give you some, some background about it. A little, a little half-ass internet research, you know what I'm saying? So this beer comes from called New Holland Brewing Company. Uh, they are based out of Holland, Michigan, and uh, they also have breweries, I think, in Grand Rapids. So today I'm drinking Dragon's Milk, um, which is a bourbon barrel aged stout, um, and it's kind of the flagship uh, beer of their brewery. Um, and I watched a sweet little video that they got. It's basically, Dragon Milk is comes from a story um, of when uh, knights would defeat dragons. And I guess as a victory, they would drink the dragon's milk. So it's pretty cool, huh? Right now it is noon, but you know what they say? It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> so this is a weekly show that I want to do. Um, talking about whatever kind of topics I'm thinking about, podcasts I'm listening to, things that are going on in the world. Um, just something that I want to... Uh, kind of do like on a weekly basis. So today I thought it'd be cool to talk a little bit, just a, just a, just a little bit 
about um, Game of Thrones, especially since we're drinking this dragon's milk. So I've had these glasses mostly for wine, but um, they're called a stemless snifter. I never knew that. And it makes sense because you can smell the aromas really nicely. My story of Game of Thrones is um, back in, I think, Jan late January or February of this year, my friend Ethan, you guys know Ethan. We, we love Lord of the Rings. That's something that we like have watched together many a times. I've seen Lord of the Rings probably, I don't know, dozens of times. Like, So he was like, dude, have you ever watched Game of Thrones? And I said, you know, I watched like part of one of like the first season and I don't know, I just, I never had like an HBO account, so I just kind of gave up. So he's like, dude, bring over your hard drive next time we do a podcast and uh, I'll put them all on your, your hard drive. And I was like, okay. So he gave me all, I think it was, at that point, it was seven seasons, yep. And uh, so I watched them all uh, leading up to the uh, premiere of season eight. And uh, through that time, I discovered uh, The Ringer um, dot com and the Binge Mode podcast with Mallory Rubin and Jason Concepcion, who I learned just earned like a like an Emmy. He won it. That's pretty dope. So I found out that they did podcasts about every episode of Game of Thrones. So um, I kind of would like watch a few episodes and then listen to the podcast. And there were some spoilers, but I knew you know I knew enough from like hearing about this show that it wasn't really that big of a deal. And for me, I'm not really like one of those people that's like, la 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 la, can't hear no spoilers, la 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 la. It was really cool because a lot of the time through Game of Thrones, um, maybe I'd get lost or I'd be like, who are, you know, there's always that thing where it's like, who's this Game of Thrones character? What's their name? I don't know. They all have very crazy sounding names and um, there's a lot of, cast members so you're like yeah of course how am I gonna remember every single person's name and how they connect with each person so your podcast helped me a lot, out a lot um, and I kind of um, just breezed through all seven seasons and I rewatched a few of them that I really liked and um, and then when season eight premiered I was like let's go I'm ready I'm prepared so um, season eight it's been everybody kind of has mixed emotions about it and I'm kind of on that same train, like, um, I think leading up to season eight, um, I had a lot of expectations and some of them were like, you know, theories that people were saying. I did not believe that Bran was a Night King. I thought that was bullcrap. There were some expectations that I had that I was like, oh, this is where the show is going that it definitely did not live up to. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of came away with that and I think it's... I think there's a lot of factors to it. I think one of the factors is that um, they, I think they found out from George R. R. Martin the ending in between, like, I think it was like season three and four or something like that. Don't quote me on that. I didn't do any research. And so I think the, la the, the last few seasons was them like, oh, we got to figure out how to make that happen. Um, and it kind of left a lot of loose ends. On from this point on, there might be spoilers if you haven't seen season eight, but people have spoiled it on Twitter. So if you've been on Twitter, you have no excuse really to not know this stuff. So there's been this similarity between uh, Game of Thrones and Harry Potter, like how JK Rowling, she told Alan Rickman um, the story arc of Snape. And he was the only one that, that really knew about it, uh, even before the last, um, you know, a couple books I think were finished. Um, she told him this is this is um, where Snape's character is going. This is like his his motives all along. All along is that he loved Lily Potter, and that's why he had this this you know he's always had this balance between like being a Death Eater, being um, a really good wizard, and protecting Harry because he has those kind of emotions. So. Um, they didn't, you know, like I, I watched the, the video of them doing the table reading of this last season and um, Kit and Amelia were both really surprised with the way that it ended. One of the other mistakes was that they decided to do, um, they kind of did shorter episodes or 
shorter range of episodes. So they uh, in the last season they did seven. This season they did six, which I know it was a lot of you know scheduling. Um, it took them 55 days, I think, to do the last or the long night, which is an incredible episode. And so I think I think a lot of um, criticism they get is that the last season and I mean even the last couple seasons feel a bit rushed. Like get up until like the end of where the books kind of end. Um, there's that there they set such a like slower, more deliberate pace. A lot of more conversation, a lot more people traveling, um, super fast. And you could notice that in the eight, in the eighth season because I was um, as I was watching, I was like I was noticing um, that conversations that we would usually get to to hear and get to analyze and see reactions from were like cut completely. Um, we had a lot of Tyrion talking, um, which I love Tyrion. I actually thought he was maybe going to be the um, the king at the end, but. I mean, he became hand of, the, hand of the king, but that was who he was for a lot, a lot of the seasons. I think with the last season, they tried to fit so much content into six episodes that there wasn't a lot of breathing room, and there wasn't a lot of there. There was some discourse in between. Like, um, I don't think there's going to be something on this scale that will have this kind of like weekly impact where there's like. As soon as episodes comes out, there's Twitter going crazy. There's you know articles being made. There's people talking about it. There's podcasts like um, this is a, a very unique show. Um, and I think one of the cool things is that the the cast like it's so expansive, but you care about them so much. Like um, even if you don't agree with the way that their character arc ended, especially with like Jamie going back to Cersei, uh, which I thought was very against his character arc, the Cl Clegane Bowl was pretty dope. I don't know, I, I just wish there was more of a satisfying ending. And I don't think anybody really saw that Bran was gonna become king, especially since he basically wasn't human. Like he's like, I'm no longer human. I'm a robot raven who can see things. And you're like, dude, stop being so creepy. <laughs> I might, I might do a, a rewatch of the last season just straight through. There's definitely a difference between when you're binging a show and then having to watch it, you know, weekly. Um, you notice things differently. You see things um, in a different light, um, and uh, you see how it all kind of fits together as as a single narrative. And so I'm excited. I, I might I might rewatch it before my HBO subscription ends. <laughs> there were a lot of missteps, especially with like the random like like coffee cup in the in you know in front of Daenerys or like the water bottles behind um Sam's leg when they're having that council meeting um I think some of that stuff could have been uh avoided I feel like there was some I don't know I don't I, I feel like they were just trying to do a lot of stuff um really quickly but um I'm excited to see where these actors go Kit Harrington, uh Amelia Clark, uh Sophie Turner and uh, like Maisie Williams and I'm excited to see where they go in their careers. I mean, this this is a lot for a lot of them. This is like other than maybe like Peter Dinklage, like this was their first job. Like maybe we'll go more in depth with Game of Thrones later on. Um, I do definitely want to watch them all, um, kind of back to back, and see how I feel about it. So when I'm delivering at Domino's, I like to listen to podcasts. Um, that's kind of you know my pastime. I'm going to talk about a couple podcasts I've been listening to lately. Uh, binge mode, okay. I mean, obviously, that's the one we've been talking about. Binge Mode is awesome. They also have, uh, they go through Harry Potter, which is freaking awesome. Like, I I grew up with Harry Potter. I got some Harry Potter on my crazy bookshelf. And, um, like, I love those movies, and I love the books. And they do an awesome podcast. They go through, like, a few chapters at a time, like three to five, maybe more, depending on the length of the book. Um, but they go, you know, through everything and they, they get all this backstory and how the how the you know how the entire story all fits together and uh, it's a super cool podcast they go over some other shows as well always on that Gary V audio experience um, Gary V he's a entrepreneur um, he's a public speaker legend and uh, so he, he just talks a lot about how to use social media 
um, to build businesses, to kind of, you know, and he, he basically is just trying to encourage entrepreneurs um, to live their best lives. So I've been getting into some of the uh, iHeartRadio um, stuff you should know. That one's pretty dope. Um, basically, like they have a topic like <laughs> this one's how crystals work or how dying works or how trampolines work. Stuff they don't want you to know. And uh, it kind of feeds my inner conspiracy theorist <laughs> or as they say, conspiracy realist. Hey. They are not like the tin hat um, crazy people. Like they actually, they look at conspiracy theories and more often than not, they're like, look, there's really not much to this conspiracy. Um, but a lot of them, you know, especially when it comes to like, you know, maybe like WikiLeaks or um, like Sesame Credit, uh, what's another good one? Uh, the NSA, stuff like that, where you're like, like, wow, this stuff, like they, you know, stuff that's been proven to be like pretty shady. And um, there's another one um, called Dissect, and uh, I'm really big into the music. And so they go through different um, albums. They have a few right now. They have they go right now. They're going through Tyler Crater, uh, Flower Boy, which is really really cool. Um, they go through Lauren Hill. Um, they go through Blonde by Frank Ocean, which is one of my top favorite albums. Uh, and then they go through uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy from Kanye uh, and then The Pimp a Butterfly through um, from uh, Kendrick Lamar which is if you want to go really in depth with an album that is the podcast for you. That Creative Life with Sarah Dietschy rhymes with Peachy. Um, she's got a YouTube channel and um, she really focuses on like camera gear, video, photography, uh, how to edit videos, all that fun stuff. I think she works out of the same office or building that Casey Neistat's office is in. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but she goes through um, a different creative person every episode um, and talks about, you know, interviews them about how they, how they got started, how they got to where they are today. Um, and it's really cool if you're into like creative stuff. Those are some of the podcasts I'm into lately. I will have more of these videos every Thursday. And yeah, appreciate you for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe. And uh, let me know what kind of beer I should try next, actually. Because um, I like, you know, I like a good brew. And uh, maybe I'll do some mead or something like that. Some crazy, maybe wine occasionally. Or just a coffee if it's, you know, too early in the morning.